Hello everyone to my video about how this virtual cockpit in the first section I will show you the technology behind the display in the second part the real world usage and in the third I will say about the drawbacks and advantages of this technology. How this virtual cockpit uses a 12.3 inch TFT display with the effective resolution of 1440 by 5 40 pixels or 1920 by 720 pixels. It has been used since 2013 in Audi R8 and TT as you can see on the picture which also have a unique graphic. Powering this display is NVIDIA Tegra 30 graphics card based on 40 nanometer process at 1.6 gigahertz and speed of DDR3 1600 megahertz with 2 gigs of RAM. The content on the screen is refreshed up to 60 hertz based on model you are having or you have. The display is has a unique graphics and of course they depend on what is shown. You can choose um, from multiple menus and now let's dive into how you actually want to use this display also while driving. Audi has tried to make it as intuitive as possible so everyone can figure it out. First of all buttons which control the display. By these you move on the top different sections telephone navigation and media information. Uh, this view button increases the size of the virtual dials as you can see and it's uh, accessible in all of those settings at the top and this one just goes back if you are hidden in one menu. On the right side of the steering wheel controlled by right, your right fingers there is a navigation mute button and customizable button when you press it for a longer period then you have a menu that can show you just how or what function would you like to select you can use now the MMI controller to do that and these buttons are for skipping the tracks displayed on the top and this is for voice activation when your Android Auto is connected or I guess also Apple CarPlay then you just use Siri or Google Assistant and this is for answering calls or rejecting them by double pressing. As I've said the virtual display is divided logically this is the temperature of the oil and here is the temperature of the coolant there is your reserve for gas and here are different lights which not illuminate this is just because the ignition is turned on. Now you can cycle through this menu using the swivel, swivel wheel just like this easy and simple of course there is much more uh, assistance when you are driving I can show you that later on. This is your media section where you can choose the uh, source just click and that will be it. You can switch to radio or go back to your uh, other media such as Bluetooth and other. This is your telephone self-explanatory favorites directory. You can just call using the telephone button right here and navigation is as such now when you are here then here in the menu you go just up to the map or you can do the same by going to the button back or pressing the button back which gets you to the map like so it's easy to set the destination using this uh, screen because it's at your fingertips really and at the right you have just stop route guidance option once you are done with the guidance we can do that for example now bam and it is done the temperature is right there you can customize it as well as the clock is always there this is for the uh, line assistance feature keeping you in the line but to customize it you have to go into the central menu of the system 
And in the main system, you have the addition display options where you can change uh, this display to indicate your, well, whatever you want to or have it uh, dialed back. I would really like to see an option where you can just minimize uh, all of the information uh, to have it black uh, because while driving it can be a bit distracting, uh, especially in the dark and uh, that simply means well you can also change it for a traffic look for example your map orientation as, as such you can use that for example you know wherever you want to and now we are looking at our target but the only way to make it less distracting while driving at night is for example to have it like this to see all the stars uh, in the universe right in front of you. Also a great addition would be if you had the option to display uh, your parking aid in the front of the screen not just here because well this is in front of you and it's easier to look here than here uh, for example, Audi R8 uh, has a reversing camera right inside of this pinnacle and it is quite useful. It auto also automatically switches to night mode if you have it selected to do so and dims the screen. However, the black levels aren't like an OLED or something, so you don't expect uh, miracles. And in the button down there, the only way you can see how the modes change is by uh, using the uh, Audi Drive Select feature. And well, it doesn't customize at all when you are in sports mode. And without, if you don't have an SQ7 or S4 or S5, you can't even choose to have one large tachometer or ref counter in the middle of the screen. This is your, well, this is the only layout you get really. So this is a bit of a bummer. And for instance, when you turn off the traction control, another menu appears and also the, this other menu appears, for example, when you have a low range on your fuel tank or other messages in the pinnacle go in this corner and it tells you, well, change oil or fill up the tank or would you like to navigate to a nearest station and so on and so forth. And one important button when you want to reset the trip computer, you just press this button right here and it goes to zero. So I hope you find that useful. And now let's talk about the positives and negatives of the system. I found the menus quite logically laid out. Also, the user interface is quite nice. Overall menu is quite simple to control and it is super cool when someone sits in the car for the first time. Also a great use of Google Earth and overall integration of Google Maps. So far it hasn't glitched or anything using it for third year and it has a great visibility even in direct sunlight as you can see. It also has a nice color rendering and is quite dimmable in dark. But no system is perfect and this one has its drawbacks as well. Firstly, even though the Nvidia graphics try to keep up, it definitely isn't always running on 60Hz or 60fps refresh rate. There is no software update possibility even though we have the connection via Audi Connect to the internet. Unfortunately, there is very little to no customization possibilities for a demanding user, some kind of pro mode, and there are no major differences between efficiency and dynamic modes. For example, the gauges do not go or turn red or green. The display also could show more information about the vehicle and has quite poor black levels and car bleeding in night time. Contrast ratio could also be higher. This was fixed in the update when the transition to the glossy screen of the new gen. The screen could be tilted towards the driver because now it's in 90 degrees. Overall a great system though.
thank you for watching this video i hope you've learned something new and how cool this technology is that's implemented in every audi currently in the making so if you liked or have any other questions leave them down below and i will answer them see you in the next video take care bye bye